fellow viewers, ladies and gentlemen, please listen to this very important communicate, important message from A Govsi leader, Dr. Chu. Oh, Ayaba. please, they. Very important message money. from A Govsi leader, um, Dr. Chu. I noticed Ayaba. yesterday they brought the body of uh, late General Efang to Guzang. And it was very strategic. The war of liberation is about setting narratives and controlling narratives. Since General Efan was kidnapped from the hospital, the enemy has not known what to do with him, to keep him alive or to murder him. First, he was subjected to torture. He lost consciousness. They sent uh, individuals to the General Hospital of Bamenda and brought in medical staff to Upstation Bamenda. They resuscitated him. They continued with uh, torture until he, he died. From there, they, they took his body to the mortuary and they mounted security guard, armor cars in the mortuary for all the entire period. Once they engage in the actions in the hospital, we notified relevant international actors on their obligation under international humanitarian law. I'll leave it at that. Then they fake the signature of the director of the hospital and made an announcement. They withdrew a couple of military personnel from the hospital and replaced them with plain cloth security men. We were watching every move of theirs. Then they moved armor personnel carriers into Guzan as a test run. We have that on video. We sent a unit in there to strike on, on them. They moved out. They have been confused what to do with the man that they have haunted for seven years and finally murdered. The reason they have brought him yesterday, even after making the fake announcement, is because of the bloody nose we gave them on the 11th of February. They know our people are vulnerable. They know that 11th of February demonstrated the strength of our forces and the leadership I provide. They have tried desperately to change the narrative since they know there are so many amongst us who will not wish our forces to have one day of glory. They know they can easily change the narrative from the victory that you had on the 11th of February to the body of General Efa. And most of you are falling for it. You have taken the bait from the enemy, changed the narrative, rather than perpetuating and propagating the disgrace and humiliation you gave and occupying power, riding in armor cars. You've changed the subject to a man who was giving his life for our country. General Efang, you are placed day and you should rest in peace. The men you've left behind will continue to fight until the last soldier of La Republic of Cameroon is booted out of the territory. Yesterday, two of your units in Mezam fought in the center of the city and drove the enemy from several places. General Efang did not die because he carried a rifle. He died because he is an Ambazonian. I use the present tense. The children of Ngabu, baby Mata, grandmama Api, Samsoya, were not murdered because they carried rifles. For all of you, for all of you, and I say this based on history, I will never celebrate the demise of an Ambazonian 
even when we differ. The enemy does not know who is or who is against. The enemy considers you an Amazonian. When Gaza is flattened, they don't make a distinction between those who are for Hamas, those who are not, or those who are for Israel, or those who are not. When those who think they are entitled to define your present and shape your future, when their power is threatened, they will kill everybody. The master feels revulsion when the slave who had succumbed to authority rises up to question that authority. And I want each Amazonian to know from 1961 up till today, many Amazonians have been killed. Even John Fundy, who later became the Allied, was locked up at his home for months. Late Pa Mukong was in jail. Late uh, uh, Ayamba was in jail. They don't kill you because you carry a rifle. They kill you because you're an Amazonian. They kill you because You've rejected the dispossession of your land. And if you think, if you embrace Cameroon, if you change your name to Roger Miller, if you worship their flag, you will be accepted. No, the servant never sits on the same table like the master. Even on issues like education, even on issues like sports, never. The Francophones are so arrogant, but things are changing. And we'll be having a global meeting on Sunday to discuss these things. The enemy has collapsed. For the first time, you are getting dissenting voices of Cameroonians raising the question of the ability of the enemy to prevail in Amazonia. Because they have concluded, and rightly, they cannot defeat Amazonia. They cannot. And I say, said yesterday, I, Dr. Cho Ayaba, am not interested in compromise. There will be no compromise on the question of our independence and the sovereignty being bestowed to the Amazonian people over our territory. Not because I hate Cameroon, because as I have explained many times, check across the world, there is no precedence Cameroon hasn't got any example they can follow. I listened to some charlatans and traitors. They talking about, oh, you know, UK model, Canada model. Absolutely ridiculous. England has a treaty, 300 years old treaty with Scotland to come together to set up the United Kingdom with, with Wales and uh, Northern Ireland is based on the foundation of law. It's based on the recognition of peoplehood. It's based on the recognition of separate identity. That is different from a country that believes you are their slaves, you are part and parcel of their so-called indivisible Cameroon. And you either succumb to that nonsense or you find yourself in the grave. So when you're looking at models, you look at the context, democracy, autocracy. Secondly, as I have argued, Francophone states, the emergence of the French Fifth Republic, even the fourth, was based on a parliamentary system that they thought was chaotic. They centralized governance in France and De Gaulle became the first president of a centralized state. The French don't believe in minorities. That is clear in a letter they sent to the Minority Rights Commission, I think in 1989 or 1988. They don't recognize minorities. Cameroon has no solution. 
the one who break into your house, occupied your living space, rape your wife, and turn your kids into slaves, cannot open the window while you are standing outside and tells you, I am willing to make compromises in your own house. Get the hell out of my house first. That's when we can start talking. If we are having any conversation while you are sitting in my living room and I am outside, it is when do you get the hell out of my own house? The reason all political leaders from the Funchas to the Munas have failed or failed is because they did not understand these facts. That it is not simply because they haven't made a better argument. It is because Cameroon considers itself as the mother state of a so-called defunct German colonial enclave. And it has the right to exercise violence over a people. Cameroon lives in a system that does not know the devolution of powers. They have changed it, whether they call it province or they call it region or they call it special status, you can change the name 100 times. The logic is going to remain the same. Cameroon has run out of time. They neither have a solution to the malaise they are going through in their own country, nor do they even have the good faith to contemplate an honest discussion about their presence in our homeland. That is why they orchestrated the Swiss process to divert. They orchestrated the Canadian process to divert. Their hope is that these diversions will win a lot of vulnerable people to believe in their good intentions and in my in, and, and stand against my supposed extremism and non-compromising position. My position is based on history, is based on experience. No matter how Foncha compromise, how Endele compromise, it did not work. No matter how others have compromised, it has not worked. Cameroon's intention is to extinguish us from our land, take over the land, and do whatever it wants to do with our resources. It doesn't give a damn about you. Neither does it give a damn about me. It is interested in its geopolitical space. It's interested in the demonstration of power. Paul Bia has also learned that Nyasinbe Eyadema gave a sovereign national conference it ended up collapsing the Eyadema dynasty. The length that Omar Bongo made some compromises, it ended up taking them out. They have learned, uh, Isen Abre, all the Francophone countries made cosmetic compromises with opposition parties. It ended up in their demise. That is why Bia has never compromised. That is why Ayijo never compromise. Integrate within the CD, CNU or you end up in jail or you are dead. That is why they could not compromise with Patasan. That is why you have teachers in jail. And for seven years, they have not compromised. For seven years, they have still used the Bafut airport as a concentration camp to bring in Ambazonians and ship them to Yaoundé. They have not made any compromise on any issue. We will not compromise. We will fight till the bitter end, until they succumb. And we will dictate the terms of the surrender. Let Cameroon know this. We have the time. They don't have it. They have collapsed financially. They have collapsed in terms of the fabric of their society. They have collapsed in their moral standing. They've collapsed completely as a state. What is holding them together is the teaching of the international community, the sense of legitimization presented by diplomats in Yaoundé, the sense of survival presented by international financial institutions to avoid sudden collapse that might lead to international security issues. We understand it. 
and we play with knowledge. We will continue to fight. We have authorized our forces to leave the body of General Efang where it is. We will keep them in their confusion. They can make another, another announcement. They can sit in armor cars and get civilians around. We've gone through that. We'll learn our lessons. And we affirm and let Cameroon get this very clearly. This is the generation that writes the end of their history in Ambazonia.